it's well known that people who take others' lives are closely examined by society. People want to know why they did it. Sometimes, there's no clear answer, but often it comes down to how they were raised. Many times, the person who committed the crime was raised by a mother figure. Some moms did their best to raise a happy and healthy child, while others seem to enjoy causing their children pain. Whether it's because of their upbringing or something else, people want to understand more about these women who raised individuals capable of such terrible acts. Horror history. You know that special bond between a mother and her child? Well, Kathy takes it to a whole new level. Even after her son Stephen got caught up in some serious trouble, strangling and burning three teenage boys, no less, she still talks about him like he's her golden boy. Yep, according to her, it was all just a bit of harmless mischief, but hold up a sec. Her idea of mischief seems a tad off, don't you think? While moms usually have their kids' backs, ignoring all the evidence presented in court, that's a whole other level of loyalty. It's like Kathy's living in her own world, where her son can do no wrong. But let's face it, Stephen's not exactly the poster child for good behavior. Sure, every mom wants to stand by her kid, but when it means turning a blind eye to the pain and suffering of the victim's families, that's a tough pill to swallow. Yet Kathy's not backing down. Nope, she's sticking to her guns, come what may. If you've dipped your toes into the world of serial killers, you've probably stumbled across the infamous Ted Bundy. But let's shine a light on someone who doesn't get as much spotlight, his mother, Louise. She's been a staunch supporter of her son's innocence for years, but her name isn't as widely recognized. Now, Ted, during his time behind bars, opened up about all sorts of childhood traumas. Some of his claims remain unverified, but one chilling truth emerged. He learned at a tender age that his sister was, in fact, his mother. Imagine the impact that bombshell had on his young mind. Right up until his death row confession, perhaps a last-ditch effort to postpone his execution, Louise stood by Ted, unwavering in her belief in his innocence. So, you can imagine her shock when he spilled the beans about his crimes while awaiting his fate. It must have been a gut-wrenching revelation for her. When faced with the unthinkable deeds of their children, not every mother reacts the same. Lori Noble found herself in a heart-wrenching situation when her son confessed to a heinous crime. Jeffrey Noble didn't mince words, he admitted to his mother that he had taken the life of his friend, Andrew Beep White, even showing her a disturbing photo of the aftermath. Unlike Louise Bundy, who remained steadfast in her support of her son Ted, Lori took a different path. She didn't hesitate to take action, promptly reporting her son to the authorities. Later, she bravely took the stand and testified against him in court. Her actions played a role in his conviction for first-degree murder, earning him a life sentence without parole. In Lori's case, the ties of family didn't outweigh the severity of her son's actions. Her response was one of courage and clarity, understandable to many who found themselves in similar circumstances. Kathleen finds solace in the fact that her daughter, Joanna Dennehy, responsible for a series of murders, is now incarcerated. Joanna, convicted for her role in multiple killings, is serving a life sentence. Reflecting on Joanna's upbringing, Kathleen remembers her as a gentle and caring child, showing compassion even for the smallest creatures. However, as Joanna grew older, something changed dramatically. At the age of 30, she embarked on a violent rampage claiming the lives of three men and injuring two others. What's striking is Joanna's admission that she deliberately targeted men, expressing a reluctance to harm women, particularly those with children. Joanna's descent into violence was fueled by substance abuse and other destructive behaviors, leaving her mother profoundly saddened. Mental illness likely played a significant role, as Joanna was diagnosed with psychopathic and antisocial disorders later on. Kathleen firmly believes that her daughter is no longer the person she once was, and the precise moment when things went awry remains a mystery. When it comes to infamous criminals, Jeffrey Dahmer's name is synonymous with horror. He was handed 17 life sentences for the gruesome murders of multiple men. Yet, in 1994, justice took a different course when another inmate decided Dahmer deserved the death penalty and ended his life in prison. Jeffrey's caregiver, Joyce Flint, 
brought him into the world in May 1960. Early accounts paint him as a typical, cheerful child until a hernia surgery at age 4 seemed to change everything. Following the operation, Jeffrey withdrew, and it's speculated that this event triggered a mental unraveling that led to his murderous path. After Jeffrey's demise, an unusual legal battle ensued between Joyce and his father over his brain. Surprisingly, Jeffrey's will stipulated that his brain be preserved for scientific study, opposing his father's wish for cremation. Joyce fought to honor her son's wishes, leading to the brain's preservation intact for future examination, while the ashes were divided between the parents. It's a pity we may never uncover if physiological abnormalities in Jeffrey's brain played a role in his crimes. This mother's heart shattered upon learning of her child's horrific deeds. Dylan, her son, committed a heinous act by shooting and killing nine individuals during a church gathering. Motivated by racial animosity, the tragedy deeply affected Amy, leading to her collapsing in the courtroom and subsequently suffering a heart attack. Amy's stance regarding her son's case remains somewhat ambiguous. However, she has been heard advising him to secure competent legal representation and to conduct himself appropriately during court proceedings. In contrast, Dylan displayed contempt for the trial process, even joking about the possibility of facing capital punishment. He openly admitted to wanting to spark a racial conflict, citing it as his primary motive for the killings. Amy finds herself torn between supporting her son and grappling with the repugnance of his actions. Sue Klebold stands out as perhaps the most widely recognized mother in this group. She has been the focus of numerous interviews and has even been the subject of two books. Additionally, Sue wrote her own memoir following the tragic events. In her writings and public appearances, she has openly admitted to overlooking warning signs that ultimately led her son Dylan to commit one of the most infamous mass shootings in history. Dylan, along with his accomplice, perpetrated the Columbine High School shooting, claiming the lives of 15 individuals. While Dylan was growing up, he appeared to be a compassionate child, but his demeanor changed during his high school years. Since the tragedy, Sue has become a passionate advocate for suicide prevention, all proceeds from her memoir are directed towards charitable causes aimed at preventing similar incidents in the future. Sue remains deeply reflective, constantly considering what actions she could have taken differently to prevent the tragedy. Her commitment to preventing future tragedies remains unwavering. Rosita faced a difficult ordeal when she spent four months under house arrest, all in an attempt to protect her son, Howell Emanuel Donaldson III. Despite facing contempt charges for refusing to cooperate with prosecutors, she remained resolute until eventually providing crucial information to law enforcement. Alongside her husband, they aided in Howell's arrest for the deaths of four individuals. Despite their efforts, they couldn't provide an alibi for Howell during the time of the murders. Additionally, Rosita opposed his insanity plea, citing no prior history of mental illness. Despite her best efforts, the truth emerged leading Howell to face the consequences. Nevertheless, Rosita and her husband continue to stand by their son, supporting him as he navigates the challenges of life behind bars, which has taken a toll on his mental well-being. After a week-long pursuit by law enforcement, Lillian Graham stood by her son Harrison as he surrendered to the authorities. Harrison faced charges related to seven murders, with the bodies of all victims found in his apartment, some dismembered. Despite being present during his arrest, Lillian firmly believes in her son's innocence and made a heartfelt plea to the judge to spare Harrison's life during sentencing. She vehemently denies his involvement in the murders, particularly the act of strangulation, and ardently wishes for his release. While initially sentenced to death, Harrison's punishment was later reduced to life imprisonment. It remains uncertain whether Lillian genuinely holds onto her belief in her son's innocence or if she struggles to come to terms with his involvement in such horrendous acts. Information about Regina, who passed away in 2017, is scarce. She was the mother of a man responsible for the deaths of seven individuals. Sometimes, children who appear normal undergo personality changes that lead to violent behavior, possibly linked to early life hand injuries. While there's no definitive evidence of such an injury in this case, it raises speculation. Before her death, Regina was involved in a wrongful death lawsuit filed by a family member of one of the victims. 
Her son, Todd Kolhep, pleaded guilty to all charges and received seven consecutive life sentences. Regina's passing spared her from witnessing this outcome, shielding her from the anguish of facing the truth about her son's horrific deeds. In the interrogation room, Diana Chisholm's responses to the police displayed uncertainty. Initially, she described her son Philip as a well-behaved child. However, she later confessed her belief that he might be capable of wrongdoing due to their family's history of mental illness. Unfortunately, this suspicion proved accurate when Philip violently attacked, killed, and wrapped his high school math teacher. Diana also admitted to recognizing signs that her son might be headed down a troubling path but failed to take any action. During the police questioning, she initially offered to assist in obtaining information from Philip. However, she later retracted this offer, insisting that Philip exercise his right to legal representation. In hindsight, Diana acknowledges that she might have intervened when she observed Philip's unusual behavior. She now realizes the importance of her potential actions. Diana expressed remorse to the victim's family and requested prayers for her son. For more spine-chilling content like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And if you enjoyed or learned something new, don't forget to give this video a like. Until next time, stay tuned for more thrilling updates. See you in the next one.